oh, I'm going to Peru. It's like, oh. Or I'm going to the Czech Republic. Oh, cool. Oh, good for you. I'm going to Brazil. Oh. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do this. Another Seth and Eric speak in English about our experiences with Brazil. I hope people can take it. I don't know if the public is ready for another one of these. Oh wow, yeah, it's been a little while. Um, oh, that's the coffee, I'll be right back. Don't talk about me behind my back. So this morning, Seth comes out of his bedroom wearing nothing but a polka dot sunga. Oh, he's got some very, Ooh. hey! What? Hey! All right, we are in the United States of America, so I have an American cup. As you know, all Americans use American cups. And cheers! Is it bad luck to um, do cheers over non-alcoholic beverage in Brazil? I don't know. Please Whoa, respond in the comments below. Would you believe that it was exactly eight years ago today that we filmed the first Amigo Gringo episodes with Vanessa? That's insane. Tá vendo o post? Pega com a mão. Não abrace como se fosse namoradinho. Outras pessoas também precisam. E quer parecer cool no trem? Todo mundo fica lendo o um smartphone. Assim que, se quiser ser diferente, pega um livro sofisticado. Quem sabe, talvez faça novos amigos ou amigas. Eight years. Exactly eight years ago. We've both made Brazil a part of our lives. People associate me with Brazil. Like, if, if I go to a, a party, if there's anyone from Brazil there, they're like, bring the Brazilian over. Are you similarly associated with Brazil? I am, because I post a lot on Instagram when I'm there. So, for the last probably five years at least, I am treated very much like a guy that goes to Brazil a lot. And What do people ask you about? Well, a new one is now people are thinking about moving there. I've had several people ask me about what's it like to live in Brazil, which is a different question than what's it like to visit. Right. People are thinking of just moving. And Brazil's high on the list because it's one of the first countries to make it super easy almost to sort of invite people to come. Mm -hmm. With a nomad visa. With a nomad visa. I would say in the last month, probably three people or more have asked me what's it like to live and is it worth it? But then the first thing is always safety. Is it safe? Right. Will, will I get robbed? Will I die? Obviously the answer is, it depends on a million things. What, what do you tell them? I start off by telling the story of everything that I love about being there. Mm -hmm. And then I weigh that against, it's not just the crime, it's more the idea of the crime. When you step outside, that quiet feeling that maybe today's the day. Maybe they'll get my phone today. It's a negative, you know, when you step outside here, I don't worry if someone's gonna get my phone today. But it's very subtle, it's kind of a small thing. And I, in fact, I don't even notice it when I'm in Brazil. It's more, I come back here, I get out of the plane, and I'm able to just be cavalier with my phone. Well, by the way, your phone, in theory, could get stolen here as well. I came back from Brazil, the first thing that happened was my backpack was robbed here. Whoa. So, just now, I was in Brazil for five and a half months, nothing got stolen. Come back to the United States. I was in the Starbucks. I left my bag to go to the bathroom, and I asked the people at the table to watch my bag. Come back and it's gone. Someone had come in to pretend they were admiring the art because there was art in that little nook and corner. I left the bag in a vulnerable position because I had that sort of cockiness. Right. How do you say cocky in Portuguese? No idea. Right. So what I tell them is, um, I have some of the best memories of my life are in Brazil. My favorite thing is the people. And then on top of that, you have this culture that I love. Um, I love the food, I love the music. And so all of that is so wonderful that I will pay the price of maybe losing a cell phone or something someday. And I don't think I'm gonna die. You have to separate between will you get killed or will your phone get robbed. 
I'm sure it can be quite traumatic to have your phone robbed, especially if they do it in some kind of a violent way. Right. I don't want to underestimate that, but I'm more willing to let that happen. I don't think I'm going to die. If I die in Brazil, I know how it's going to happen. How? I'm going to get hit by a bus. The buses go really fast and one centimeter from the curb. So like, whereas in New York, I step off the curb to wait for the light to change to cross the street. You can't do that in Brazil because like the bus will just go whoosh, right. right in front of your face and like almost hit you with a mirror. I, I really feel like I'm doomed. Zero margin of error. You know, when they do the big like retrospective on Fantastico about my life because I've just been killed by a bus, they can play this, this section. <laughs> What else? When people say, oh, you're traveling? I'm like, yeah, where are you going? Oh, I'm going to Brazil for two months. And it's always the same reaction. It's like, whoa. Mm -hmm. It's some mixture of this exotic, faraway place right. and the image of carnival and mostly naked women. It's a very mysterious place to most people still. Because what do we hear about it? The Amazon and carnival and soccer and music. And of course, it's, it is all those things. But it's also just a country going about its path through the world. Yeah, and United Statesians, which is what I call them now. <laughs> Busha Sako is what I call him now. He just doesn't <laughs> want to say America Americans because he thinks we're going to get criticized. We have visions of other countries. We have cliches and we have stereotypes of other countries. And the stereotype of Brazil is generally positive. Mm -hmm. So the idea of Brazil is... Exciting. What other country in the world gets you the ooh reaction? I mean, Italy, France. France and Italy, more people have been to those places. Right. So I think there's more of a familiarity. It's not as much of a mystery. It's, it's ooh, exciting. And also, Eric, you're a little adventurous. It makes me look good. And uh, the image of Brazil might be the most positive reaction I've got because I've told people I'm going to Lebanon, I'm going to Turkey. Uh, I'm going to Colombia, I'm going to Mexico, and the reaction when I say I'm going to Brazil is, as you said, very, oh. Oh, I'm going to Peru. It's like, oh, I'm going to the Czech Republic. Oh, cool. Oh, good for you. I'm going to Brazil. Oh. <laughs> what about the part of that, oh, that's about, like, the Brazilian woman? If I talk to a love interest here and I say I'm going to Brazil my American my United Statesian love interest will be a little jealous not everyone obviously but many United States women feel a little um, inferiority or jealousy about Brazilian women because they assume that they have magic powers <laughs> that's exactly right and they assume that they're superior and more beautiful and so if I'm going to Brazil, it's not spoken, but I can feel a little tone. I feel sometimes there's a little bit of derision, like the Brazilian women are kind of cheating because they're playing off this sexuality kind of a thing in a way that we don't think is right anymore. Hmm. I don't think the Brazilian women are choosing any of this. So No, this is right, an image people right. have. So yeah, so this is all based off of the cliche, which goes, you know, against many cliches make many countries have an unfair image. What are you doing stereotyping the entire country like this? It drives me a little nuts. They're, they're right and they're wrong. Yeah. They're wrong because it turns Brazilian women into a sort of over-sexualized concept, basically. Yeah. But they're right in the sense that many Brazilians, culturally, are much more forthcoming with their feelings. So. In Brazil, it's culturally accepted and appreciated to tell someone how you feel. Yeah. If you like someone, you walk up to them and you tell them that you like them. Whereas in the United States, you're sort of punished for that. Mm -hmm. um, if you put yourself out there, you're vulnerable, you tell someone you like them, if they don't like you back, uh, you're treated a little shamefully. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, because whenever I tell anyone I like them, they always have liked me. So it's interesting, Eric, so your experience being rejected in the US it's new to me. <laughs> oh, mice puta dos babacas. Americans get things right and wrong about Brazilians, mm -hmm. but one of the things that they do get right with the stereotype is that Brazilians generally are more fun.
have people do people bring up politics now? Uh, to me, um, Bolsonaro is the first Brazilian president that pretty much everyone has heard of. Trump is so divisive that there's pretty much only two types of conversations I have about Trump, and that is with someone who strongly hates him mm -hmm. or strongly likes him. Mm -hmm. And so those same people divide the same lines when it comes to Bolsonaro. Yeah. So those that really like Trump kind of get the basic idea that Bolsonaro, they like him. Their opinion about him is pretty vague. Yeah. Because they don't know much about him. People only know what they've read in the American press. And quite frankly, you don't hear about him that much. And you only hear about him in certain contexts. Mostly the Amazon. That's the main thing. And I do have more left-wing liberal friends who know him as the guy destroying the Amazon, which is kind right. of like the headline that people pick up. He's certainly no friend of preserving the Amazon, so I don't want to imply that he's not. But obviously the story is more complicated, just like every story is more complicated. Yeah, and I, I have my political leanings, but my main political belief is that it's more complicated than most people think. And anyone that comes and gives me a strong opinion my immediate reaction to them is, I think it's more complicated than that. It's insane how convinced people are that they are in a righteous, undeniably uh, virtuous group. Yeah, and the that other, is so true. And the other group is the worst and evil and they want, they actively want to cause pain and destruction. And someone that talks to me about the Trump people in that way I know these people, yeah. and they do not wish the destruction of some of them, right? I know some Trump supporters that do not wish harm on other people. Is there anything else people want to know about Brazil or some reaction they have to you being associated with it? Uh, sometimes they ask me, why did I come back from Brazil? Oh. I've had people tell me that. What are you doing back here? And I tell them, I don't know. People will ask about the food, so let me just... We'll sort of make that the final question. When people say, like, what's Brazilian food like? What do you tell them? I say that Brazilian food is more diverse than they would imagine. Right. And you have regional cuisines that are so great. One thing I try to bring up is just I feel like Brazilians have a formula for eating healthier that, I mean, and everyone in Brazil will definitely agree with me, but I think Americans have a little bit more trouble with that because our image is of these... Um, Chahascarias, where you're just like shoving meat down your throat, and there is a huge consumption of meat in Brazil. But I just find like the whole uh, self service, design your own plate at lunch, also this whole comida de verdade, where like there's rice and beans, like something about rice and beans and salada and, and meat is just by default, it could be healthier, like you could be eating less meat, but it's also definitely healthier than sort of the average American meal. There's probably more like super healthy Americans than there are super healthy Brazilians. Right. But the average Brazilian food is healthier than the average American food. Like with politics, it's complicated. Yeah. And that's the message I usually try to tell people. Brazil is amazing and I love it. And it's diverse and complicated. You know, one of the most important lessons I've learned Experiencing Brazil is realizing that my image of other countries has got to be wrong. Right. Because now that I know how complicated things are in reality, how complex, diverse, differing opinions, different experiences, depends on where you are in Brazil, are you in the interior, are you in the capital, are you in the southeast, are you in the north, that when someone talks about China or Poland, I try to remember like there are tons of different worlds within these other countries. And so, by the way, if you're nodding along with me at home, I think that it's important to realize that the United States is also extremely complex. And I think a lot of Brazilians have a lot of stereotypes of the United States that's very similar to that. By the way, one final thing, not to get all teary-eyed, Eric, but so we knew each other before this, but this is eight years of an important friendship and yeah. professional collaboration. Yeah. Among the many things that's come from this, our friendship has 
it, I think is important for both of us. I agree. It better be. <laughs> or else I really look like a jerk. <laughs> uh, I agree. The Amigo Gringo experience has given me this uh, friendship, mm -hmm. which I really love. And then Brazil. You know, so those two things. And, and by the way, it's also let us grow. You talk so much about romantic relationships that now working and supporting each other, we are both in long-term, very healthy romantic relationships with other people. Not Saki, no. Probably it's your fault that I'm not. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Yeah. So that's kind of the negative side of our friendship. We've gotten terrible advice about relationships. It couldn't be the Sunkans. <laughs> <laughs>